Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for joining us this morning in our webinar. And, um, you know, I want to especially welcome those uh, service providers who are here with us this morning. We also want to welcome our BPO practitioners, operators, developers, and employees in the BPO sector. Uh, we really want to thank you for joining us for this Business Opportunity Online Forum we will be exploring the global services sector, uh, specifically the BPO industry, looking at ways of linking outsourcing operators and service providers. But first, uh, we have some ground rules that we want to share with you. So this webinar is being recorded all video and audios have been turned off for participants. If you have questions, please, we're asking you to type those questions in the question box below. That little uh, dialog box which says Q&A, that's where we want you to put your, your questions. Your questions will be answered by one of the panelists live or responded to in the box. No verbal questions will be allowed during this session. So again, we're asking you to type your questions in the Q&A uh, box uh, at the bottom of your screen. We're also going to be responding to those questions at the end of the session. So let me just quickly take you through the agenda for this morning. So my name is Conrad Robinson. I'm the manager for Jampro Western Regional Office. And joining us this morning for this discussion for this webinar, is Gloria Henry, who is the president of the Global Services Association of Jamaica. And she will be talking to us about the future of GSS Jamaica and its global opportunities. Um, then I will come back and speak with you about the value of support services to the GSS investor. And then of course we have with us, Mr. Jake Becker, who is the VP of Operations for Teleperformance Jamaica. And he will be talking to you about buying local uh, what the expectations are. And then, of course, as I said before, we'll be going through our Q&A at the end of the presentations. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Ms. Gloria Henry, who is the president of the Global Services Association of Jamaica, for her presentation. Good morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Good morning again, Gloria. Good morning. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Conrad, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the global services sector. I see my screen is jumping all over the place. Um, can you all see my presentation? Yes, we are. Okay. So I'm just quickly going to talk about the BPIJ. We are an industry, private sector industry led organization, and we're a membership organization that is an advocacy for global services in Jamaica. Um, so we own the name Global Services Association of Jamaica and we're a one-stop um, industry association for anybody operating within the sector, whether they are in knowledge process outsourcing, IT outsourcing, or our traditional business process outsourcing. We operate on several pillars, strategy and policy, research and best practice, innovation and linkages, investment and business development, and of course, the brand positioning, which is Jampro's forte, but we work very closely with Jampro, and it is why we are here today um, doing this presentation with Conrad and some of our operators. Um, these are the areas that I'm going to be covering today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the impact of COVID-19, the nearshore opportunity, um, forward and backward linkages, areas of needs. We have some testimonials. And then I'm going to share with you about our upcoming platform, um, Outsource to Jamaica. So um, as you all know, we Jamaica has been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it has caused a number of shiftings and changes within the global spaces, not just in Jamaica, but in other countries, of course. Um, some countries have ex experienced losses due to extensive lockdown. 
Um, many countries have implemented work at home. And Jamaica, I would say, has done very well. We were very early out of the box. People like Jake was very, very early. We were proactive. We, I mean, built on the legacy that we have over the years, which is flexibility and innovative, innovativeness and creativity. And we were able to pivot most of our workforces into distributed workforce. So I know today is not to talk about COVID pandemic, but we are still in the pandemic. And it is, of course, it has created many opportunities for Jamaicans. Uh, we have been able to work with a number of service providers to continue to keep Jamaica safe. A number of new entrepreneurs have joined the cluster of service providers. And I'm sure we will hear from some of them today. Oops, going backwards. All right, so let's take a look at Jamaica's outsourcing industry and where we are today. We have been on a journey and this journey has been a very interesting one. In 2002, uh, we were just about 3,000 employees. And, um, you know, it, we, I joined the, the industry in 2004 and we were just over 3,000 employees. Um, people knew about the great e-services and Patrick Cassidy. And we were looking at, uh, we were in a, a monopoly, telecom monopoly. So even though Jamaica had positioned itself into a liberalized telecom industry, we were still in the sector in a, in a monopoly. But we worked creatively to break up that monopoly. And by 2012, we've started to advance. And there has been no stopping since then. Uh, we have seen significant diversity in the landscape in Jamaica, growth and the built out of several, several new locations. Um, Portmore, Kingston, Mandeville, now St. Anne, um, Ocho Rios. And um, right now only two parishes in Jamaica do not have um, global services operators. And that's Trelawney and uh, St. Thomas. And I'm sure once the new highway in St. Thomas is finished then we'll see a number of operators going on that side. So services, which is uh, mostly customer services provided by large, medium, and small enterprises comprise about 80% of what we do in Jamaica. And the other 20% is more knowledge process and IT outsourcing. Our primary market is the United States, our sectors. We work in several verticals, banking and finance, retail, travel, tourism, insurance, telecommunications, healthcare, amongst others. Uh, so how have we responded um, since the, with, with the COVID pandemic? We initially, Jamaica, um, we, we, we were faced with the lockdown and whether or not we would be um, locking down for, for an extensive period of time. But we were able to lobby the government and get what we called a uh, um, enshrined in the Disaster Risk Management Act, essential services. And so business process outsourcing, we support healthcare, we support logistics, we, we support um, retail and several banking and finance and several of those um, sectors. And because of that, we were able to get within the legal framework, um, essential services approval. Since then, we have been measuring and monitoring and now we are in recovery phase. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this, except to say that um, less than 1% of our members have been impacted by um, the coronavirus within our sites. So let me get to the real opportunity, which is where Conrad wants me to be, right, Conrad? Absolutely. Yes. And it is to talk about the opportunities. All right. So as I said, Jamaica has been at the forefront of near shore opportunities since two, the early 2000. And what we do is we position ourselves to capture new and emerging opportunities from our primary market, which is the United States. This slide that you're seeing here shows opportunities abounding in the global services sector in several areas, in finance and accounting, IT managed services, contact center BPO, and I'm sure Jake will tell you a lot about that. So I'm not gonna get into that. Legal process outsourcing, and we do have several opportunities here in Jamaica with a number of persons graduating from our law school every year, engineering outsourcing and knowledge process outsourcing. 
many persons are wondering since the COVID pandemic and it has had severe impact on businesses, do we still have opportunities within the global services sector? Opportunities to grow? Yes, we do. And you will see from this slide that the global services market is expected to reach $405.6 billion by 2027. And that's expanding at a compound growth rate of 8.0%. And that is according to Grand Review, Grand View Research. Um, and uh, there are many um, analysts out there who are projecting growth. They're all consistent. Everybody, whether they're it's 6.5%, as indicated by Statista or 8.0% by um, Grand View, or even here in Jamaica, we are seeing opportunities for growth. And I'm sure Jake will tell you that his company has grown since um, July last year um, because there are new and emerging opportunities coming up within the global services sector. Um, so Jamaica at a glance, where are the firms located? They're all over Jamaica, as I've said. Those are some of the brands that operated here. Many of them are multinational, but we do have some local entities operating in Jamaica. In 2018, we commissioned a study by Ryan Strategic Advisory Agency, Peter Ryan, to really look at the opportunities and to advise us as to whether or not Jamaica was still a dynamic and significant player within the nearshore market. And what did that result turn, turn out? It did confirm that our nearshore footprint is still an important imperative for buyers within the nearshore space. So the question was asked, among the choices below, what do you see as the competitive advantages that an outsourcer must have in today's market to win business? Uh, we see large edge information security as important home-based agent capabilities. This was 2008, Conrad. Yes. And we did not have the COVID pandemic yeah, at the time. Right. Absolutely. But even then, it was very clear that home-based agent capabilities was an important imperative for the global services sector. Expertise managing compliance requirements. And of course, in this very global market space, of compliance is critical, especially within the verticals that we operate, security, healthcare, banking and finance, all of those are highly regulated industries that require significant compliance. Um, professional services, customer experience consulting, data analytic services, um, environmental contact center, center friendly delivery centers, and of course, the nearshore delivery footprint among others. And the nearshore delivery footprint is what is important to us because this is the market that we tap into. This is where we seek to have a competitive advantage. And this is a space in which we play. And since this is going to be available, I'm not going to go into the others, but you can in your own time, look at those slides. Um, so Jamaica is at the heart of the nearshore space. And we ask a question again, just to just consolidate our position and to really reinforce what we already know that Jamaica was still at the heart of nearshore space. And you will see there on the slide where we fall amongst other nearshore services providers um, that we are still a significant player in the nearshore space and we continue to leverage that capability. So what are some of the areas that are critical to us maintaining our nearshore advantage? Um, and this is where our cluster can play into. This is the space that will support our cluster activities. These are some of the areas that have been identified by survey respondents. Government incentives is way down there, but you are not interested in that as service providers. Um, Geographic proximity, that's for Conrad at Jampro and us at the BPIAJ. Political stability, of course, that is very important. Um, electricity grid, again, that's something that is of national interest. Established reputation, reputational and brand, that would be Jampro. Multiple urban centers, there are opportunities to build out multiple urban centers. As I said, uh, we are in every parishes, 
with the exception of Trelawney and St. Thomas. It, are there opportunities in St. Thomas? I'm very sure there are opportunities. There, are, The roadway, road network is now being developed. Um, spaces are being built out by Factories Corporation and several private sector developers. Is there opportunity there to build out new sites to attract new players? Absolutely. Are there opportunities in other areas, in Portmore, um, in Manchester, in Mandeville, Manchester, in St. James? There are opportunities. So the infrastructure development is an opportunity that exists there for members of the cluster. Modern transportation infrastructure, is that important? Most BPO companies transport their workers from one site to at least the nearest point within an urban center. So for instance, in Montego Bay, persons are transported from the Barney Tech Park, from the free zones in Freeport to an area in downtown Montego Bay. It's the same thing in Kingston. Persons are transported to the halfway tree transportation center. So an urban transportation infrastructure is very important to support the growth of this sector. There is right now a large network of transportation providers that provide support to this sector. Do we have opportunities for more? Absolutely. Um, high quality English skills, of course that's important. We are in the CRM industry and that's very critical. Um, in terms of public security, we utilize a lot of security services. Um, modern BPO businesses, of course, we build out and we support the infrastructure of um, creating those world-class contact center environment. And so we utilize a number of persons in different skilled areas, such as cabling operators, network operators, um, contractors, um, carpenters, and a number of other services. And of course, the scalable labor force, that's important economic, um, the, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, network connectivity, and that would be within our, that, that's not necessarily something that members of the service providers would be interested in, but to the extent that you can help to facilitate distributed workforce, which is enabling persons who are working at home to get connections because there are a number of service providers that provide internet services in Jamaica. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. And just show you a little bit of, you know, where some of those services lie in the transportation industry, in training and development, in security and ancillary services. And of course, in the, um, travel and tourism industry. Many of our companies here bring down trainers from time to time. Um, the new investors coming in, they need place to stay. Um, if you have accommodation such as in Airbnb and private facilities, those are areas that you can tap into. And I, am, I want to make the point as well that it's not just large scale businesses that can tap into these opportunities. But small operators should understand that the workers within the industry, the 42,000 plus workers that are currently in the industry, when they come into your space to do business, they are also providing economic benefits to you and your, your customers. Um, backward linkages telecommunications, internet broadband services. I think I have stressed this so many times. And of course, financial institutions. These are also opportunities that, that you can tap into. I put this picture here specifically because I want persons to understand that purpose designed spaces are more attractive than, than just trying to um, find any space that is available and entice BPOs to it. So if you want to attract um, members of the global services sector to your facilities, to your development, to your um, spaces, you have to understand 
that we're operating in a highly competitive, globally competitive environment. And that, you know, look and feel is critical, absolutely fundamental to Jamaica's competitiveness and to our um, operators here in Jamaica. And so your spaces have to be purpose designed. They have to look a certain way. I deliberately used Alorica because I know that many Jamaicans have been, you know, since last year have been talking about Alorica in many other ways, but I wanted to use the space to show you that Alorica really has one of the most up-to-date purpose design spaces from which they operate now at 58 Halfway Tree in Kingston. All right, I think I'm winding down now and I realize I've been all over the place, but there are so many things to, to talk about and there is not a lot of time because Conrad only gave me 10 minutes and I think I've gone 20 already. So I am going to just put this on the screen. Uh, and this really just is a landscape of areas that you can tap into, a landscape of areas, whether you're building out, whether you're providing support services, whether you're providing managed services. These are all the many, many, many areas that you can tap into to support the sector. If you're in financing, there's payroll services, there's compliance, there's corporate reporting, there is helping companies to open their business and get um, TRN and um, GCT registration numbers, filing at the tax office. Uh, if you're in support services, there's food, janitorial services, catering, wellness centers, transportation, which I've talked about. And if you're in built out, I mean, there is, of course, fire and safety, there is um, video surveillance systems, and a host of services. And Jake will elaborate on some of those areas. And of course, we could not do this presentation without showing you that some of our service providers continue to support and, 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 and benefit from this sector. And they're very pleased with the results that they've had. And we have one testimonial from Navy Supplies, Office Supplies, they said they're no longer a little stationary and office supply firm, but can confidently say that we have provided over 10,000 seats in this industry. And this was 2019, I'm sure it's a lot more now. Um, there is Warrell Selby, who is a transportation provider, which started with um, to pick up five employees at midnight and the contract has expanded to transport, transporting employees from the free zone to several areas downtown. And there is Jason from Red Key as well, who provides surveillance systems and support this industry. And finally, um, attendees, I could not end my presentation without sharing with you another opportunity for you to tap into this dynamic industry and to learn more from the practitioners, not from me, because I really sit in a very limited space, but from the many multinationals like Jake Becker and some of the multinationals that operate across Jamaica about how much more you can benefit and support yourselves and your businesses by connecting and networking in this industry. Outsource to Jamaica will bring to Jamaica, Jamaica's first full virtual reality, digital conference and expo. And when I say first full virtual reality, this is gonna be a 360 virtual reality, not an online event like you're seeing now, but you will feel like you're in a physical space. You will get the, the look and the touch and the feel. It's gonna take us back to the future. Um, you will benefit from a host of speakers and present and presenters and you will get a chance to network with some of them from not just jamaica but from canada from the us and from the uk there will be a virtual expo and this virtual expo again conrad is going to be managing the linkages component of that work um expo and he will give you the opportunity to connect with buyers in this forum will give you the opportunity to showcase some of your products if you're interested in doing that products and services you will have the opportunity to go in to put yourself in a virtual booth where you can you know use 3d 3d 
3D and 360 cameras to build out your booth and showcase your products and services. You can learn more about this by going to our website at www.gsaj.org or bpiaj.org. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present to you today. And um, I will be around for questions for another 40 minutes or so. Thank you very much, Conrad. Thank you very much, Gloria. I mean, I, I think that was a, an excellent presentation, giving us a, an overview of the global services sector. And of course, more importantly, the opportunities that this sector provides um, for, you know, for Jamaicans. And I will encourage again, our participants to place your answers, your questions, I'm sorry, in the, in the Q&A section. And, um, and we will definitely, we will definitely uh, get back to you um, during the course of this meeting, as well as afterwards via email or telephone calls um, if, if necessary. So, so, so Gloria will stick around. I, Gloria, in fact, I've seen a couple of uh, remarks, uh, people wanting to know how they will get, can get in touch with you. And so we encourage people to get in touch with the Global Service Association of Jamaica you can reach out to the secretariat there and they will they will be able to connect you to the network in the bpo um, sector so i'm going to jump right into my presentation um, and, and basically just tell you a little bit about what it is that we do here at, at jampro in terms of trying to attract um, investors and what they look for when they're coming to jamaica so my presentation is going to be focused on the value of support services to the GSS investor. And we're speaking specifically now to those that are trying to access opportunities in the BPO space. So we're gonna look at who we are and what we do at Jampro. Um, I give you an overview of the global services sector. I'm just going to breeze through that because Gloria did an excellent job already in presenting. Uh, we're gonna look at the ecosystem of services encouraging business partnership between the investor and the service provider and of course highlight some opportunities for third-party service providers um, as we go along so who are we for those of you who do not yet know jampro is an agency of the government that promotes business opportunities in the export and investment to local and international private sector um, and what we do is as we said before promote and serve we promote investment, project-oriented investments, export and trade, and of course, business development. Um, we do business matchmaking as we are trying to do through this forum, site selection facilitation, business approval facilitation, specialized marketing and research, and of course, film registration. We also provide export services, pretty much the same as we do in the investment space. But since the focus is on investment in this forum, we're just going to skip over this one. And then we just want to go back a little bit so that we understand where we were and um, you know, just before COVID and what people were saying about us as a, as a country. And I think that this is important for us to, hang on a second, let me try and see if I can get my full screen. Okay, great. So, you know, debt to GB, GDP, ratio down to 96% from a high of 140. That is post uh, pre-COVID. Uh, doing business report, Jamaica moved up four spots in the World Bank. Uh, doing business report 2020 from 75th to 71st of 190 country. Of course, we were the number one uh, performing stock market globally. Our inflation numbers were down in 2019 to a low of 3.4%. Our unemployment rate was also down to a historic low of 7.8%. And of course, starting a business, Jamaica was ranked sixth globally by the World Bank doing business report 2020. So investment in global services sector, as I said, Gloria did an excellent job in terms of the overview. Um, so I will just again run through some of the numbers so that you'll understand what we're talking about when we talk about the BPO sector in particular, and how that has impacted Jamaica, Jamaica's economy. So of course, we have the, the sector has contributed over 700 million US dollars in 2019 to the Jamaican economy. Um, you know, we have 
over 60 companies, 80% of which are international companies operating within the BPO sector, uh, covering some 2 million square feet of space. And we employ uh, more than 40,000 people across Jamaica, as Gloria had indicated. So Jamaica continues to be in demand. And Jamaica is the leading outsourcing destination in the English-speaking Caribbean. That was 2018. Kingston was the nearshore city of the year in 2018. And of course, industry heavyweights continue to invest in Jamaica's outsourcing sector. And you may have seen a similar slide to this one in Gloria's presentation of the multilaterals that, multinationals that are operating here in Jamaica. So let's talk a little bit now about the ecosystem of services and why is that important to the investor? So we all know that foreign investors are recognized as important drivers and shapers of the local entrepreneurial ecosystem. It is because of a number of these foreign direct investment that we have a number of local companies you know, um, op operating within Jamaica. So foreign direct investment is an important driver. Right? So important to, 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 to attracting investors is not just um, our cost of labor. As I know some people like to say that in the BPO space, it is because of the low um, cost of labor why people are attracted here. That may have some truth to it, but there's also an important aspect of the support services right, that are offered when foreign investors are looking to operate here in Jamaica. Physical, cultural, and institutional factors also impact the final decision of foreign and local investors, such as the formal institutions, as was mentioned by Gloria earlier, a stable banking sector, trade liberalization, the rule of law are all critical elements of the entrepreneurial service ecosystem that supports foreign direct investment. So understanding the ecosystem of services, we need to now recognize that any business in order to function and grow needs an ecosystem of suppliers, yes? Um, you know, for infrastructure and to support the operate, uh, operations of their businesses. What is the need? A company looking to set up operation in Jamaica needs land, road, water, power supply, and vendors and suppliers to supply its raw material or other factors of production. And most importantly, the provision of basic services to its employees in the form of transport, food services, uniform, janitorial supplies, etc. Hence, there is a need to be an entire ecosystem that support the, the, the business and its operation. So making the connection, this means that if an international business has to set up shop in a particular country, it needs the existence of top quality infrastructure and the attendant services. So we have to make that shift um, here in Jamaica. As the competition for foreign investment accelerates and intent, in, intensifies in these times, the winners are those who can provide the ecosystem of services better, faster, and smoother. So what do we say now to our service providers? You need to be more customer centric because the drastic shift in client and customer and consumer behavior has created an everlasting ripple effect on businesses from all industries and sector. This COVID is no joke. And one of the things that we encourage our service providers to do is to leverage the technology, right? The short-term behavior of consumers coping with this crisis tend to have a long-term, tend to be uh, to last long-term impacting business models, partnerships, and the competitive landscape. So you may need to relook at your business model and to see how you can use technology to, 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 to leverage your business to people who are in the BPO space. Businesses that evolve and innovate to meet the growing cost and demand while adding value to address the current crisis will stand to win. Infusing online or mobile application within the customer client service process will go a long way in helping you to win. Therefore, local third party service providers need to be more innovative in their service offerings, especially in these rapidly changing times. 
be more adaptable, be more flexible, be more efficient. So we're gonna quickly just look at some of the opportunities within this space. And Gloria mentioned several of them. So I'm just going to pick out a few and then just say, you know, these are some areas that you can look at and see how you can now become more involved in this BPO space. Work from home, workstation solution. So as you know, because of the crisis, um, at least 50% of the 40,000 employees in the BPO space have to work now from home, right? What are the opportunities that that provide? It provides opportunities for people who are in the provision of office furniture and so on to look at how they can provide workstations that are going to be functional within a home setting. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'd like to say, given because the nature of the work that is done in the BPO sector, these, these, these workstations should be designed in such a way that it almost create a bubble for the employee to, to be in where they can work undisturbed in a secured environment. So that is something that you could look at as furniture providers within that space, how you can now begin to think about providing those kinds of solutions. Of course, you know, the technology is now going to be impacted because a lot of people are working from home. What of cyber security? How can you provide uh, a technology that will help to protect um, the, 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 the information and so on that people are going to be processing whilst they are at home? This is a very important part of the opportunity that this time has presented um, the, the need for cyber security technology. Of course, sanitation supplies. You know, we are told every day that we need to sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. So there is an opportunity for sanita sanitization kits, for argument's sake. You know, where you provide these little kits with certain things in there that would be a part of a little package that each employee could have in terms of their own personal sanitization kits. We're talking about food delivery services. Uh, right? right now, we have over 60 outsourcing companies operating in Jamaica with over 40,000 agents, right? Um, as I said, half of which are working from home. As a concessionaire, as a, sir, as a food service delivery provider, how are you repositioning your business to now be able to offer service um, to these companies who may be looking to provide meals for their employees wherever they are? And interestingly, I was just over here in a conversation, um, you know, just yesterday or the day before, where there are a couple of BPO companies who are, who are distressed because since we have moved to lockdown on weekends and they open on weekends, it is now posing a challenge for them to find concessionaires who are going to be able to pivot to meet that demand for these, um, you know, employees who are in-house uh, to provide meals and so on for them. So as a third party supplier, as a conscious engineer within that space, you need to begin to look at how you can, you can get into the food service delivery business to better able to serve um, you know, people who are in the BPO space. Of course, because employees are dispersed, um, there's going to be a need for employee engagement. How can we use technology now to engage employees? online collaborative work, gamification, mobile learning tools, et cetera. These are opportunities that we can begin to look at in, 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 in making proposal to BPO companies to say, um, here's an opportunity to bring your employees within the workspace, even though they may be dispersed working from remote locations. And of course, social media management services and so on. Um, a lot of the communication that takes place between the, um, with young people these days are done on social media. And of course, there are some bad reporting and there's some good reporting on social media. What are social media management services? How can this be packaged and offered to BPO companies to protect their businesses and their employees? So ladies and gentlemen, those are some of the ideas that we have thrown out to you. Um, and so you can reach me, of course, this is going to be a recorded session. So you can always go back and you will find the information of how you may be able to contact us. Again, I'm going to remind you to put your questions in the Q&A. 
um, so that we can respond to them in our final session this morning. Uh, so again, I'm just going to say to you as third party service providers, you know, be innovative, uh, be willing to, to make that mind shift that is going to say, how are, am I going to reposition my business to be able to continue to provide service uh, within this space in these challenging times? And having said that, I'm going to now segue and go right into Jake Becker, who I want to describe as a star in local sourcing. I think Jake has made it known that he is a supporter of <laughs> local businesses. And so we felt that it was necessary to have him come on and speak to us a little bit this morning about you know, his experience so far in that space, what the expectations are. So without further ado, I hand over to you, Jay. Great, thanks, Conrad. Uh, can we share my presentation? I think it's coming up here. Great. All right, yeah, thanks a lot, Conrad. I really appreciate you uh, letting me be a part of the presentation today. Again, guys, my name is Jake Becker. I'm the VP of Operation or Country Manager and I've just been very fortunate to build my life and career in Jamaica since 2004. Um, I'm going to just uh, go ahead and tell you a little bit about what we plan to talk about today. Um, there's going to be three areas that I want to touch on. Company values um, and how we provide these details and expectations to our vendors. To, to grow with us, you need to share our values. So we'll go over that quickly. We'll also talk a little bit about and explain what has changed over the years? I know Gloria and, and Conrad shared a little bit about that. I'll, I'll just talk a little more about that. And then what teleperformance's future looks like and how it will impact our vendors. And I'm, I'm sure all the BPOs that are listening and, and everyone here have can relate to this because we're all trying to grow. We're all wanting a great future. So hopefully this is a, a good conversation. Everyone will enjoy that. But before we get started, I need to give my sincere gratitude to all our vendors. Um, it's just been a crazy 2020. It had enormous opportunities for many, and it required very, very intense efforts by all. And our vendors stepped up and they truly delivered. So I, I just, I want to make that a point before we move on to the next slide here, which is our values. Great. Um, all five of these values are extremely significant. They all have a purpose, but and everyone in our in our in our company, from every new hire, um, our vendors, we talk about these values on a regular basis. We have um, a number of different trainings um, and, and refreshers around the the values, but it's all about living them at work and also outside of work. But the three that I want to speak about today is integrity, professionalism, and commitment. So um, integrity, it's, it's starting with that one. It's an all or nothing. You can't choose when to have integrity. And when it comes to things like examples of taxes, um, we pay our fair share. If they increase, everyone has to pay their fair share. Vendors, if you don't pay your fair share, we get the tax um, office calling us asking some questions. So that's just one example. Another example is we want to foster an environment of open communication. Don't be afraid of candor. Deadlines. In many cases, vendors like to give us deadlines that get us all excited. We're all adults. We can handle the truth. We need to set deadlines that are reasonable and, and just stay honest and, and show that those, those deadlines can be met. Um, professionalism. This is a very, um, very interesting one because I run into this a lot um, where people believe professionalism means formality. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not worried about someone calling me Mr. Becker or observing the rules of etiquette. Um, we're hiring vendors to do the job right the very first time. That's professional. Professionalism is getting the job done the right the very first time. Otherwise, they, they could give me give me the tools. I'll try, but I know I'm not going to do a very good job. So that's why we hire these professionals. I'm going to give you a quick example of um, what's happened to us over the years. I'll, I'll, I'll step back to 2007. We were acquired um, by Teleperformance and our founder who visited um, Jamaica and personally picked Jamaica for growth. He had committed back in 2007. Within one year, we're going to start refurbishing the buildings that you're in. And he started with building eight. So we went ahead. 
We got our US preferred vendors um, to do the majority of the work, getting the materials and you know everything, every, nearly everything back in 2008 was, was shipped in by, by containers. But we did need to have a contractor that was local. And we thought we did a decent job with looking at you know multiple proposals, referral checks, you know, doing our due diligence research. And we landed on a, on a Jamaican construction company to do this very first large expansive um, refurbishing. And the results were less than desirable. We missed deadlines, we were over budgeted, we had missing material. Um, and then as, as time went on, more surprises came in where we had an entire electrical issue with the building that we ended up having to uh, go back and revamp. So. We could have said enough with local vendors. Um, we had our first big experience. It was less than desirable. Let's go back to our preferred US vendors and just continue to use them like what the, what the rest of the globe is doing in many cases for our company. Um, but instead, we, we didn't. I, I, I went to the US preferred vendors. I said, let's do extensive due diligence more than we have in the past find the right people because they exist and we want we just want this for the for the community and for Montego Bay. So we did that research. We found a, a company. Um, they revamped the wiring, the transformers, the circuit breakers. They redid everything and they did such a great job that our next expansion, we used them and, and we we went through the same process of the same due diligence with plumbers and tilers and HVAC and drywall and every other aspect of it and they have grown with us. So hopefully I explained professionalism well enough to you, but that's a really important value in our company. The last one I wanna speak about is commitment. Um, our vendors are deeply engaged. And at any point in time, if there's something that, they, that we need, they're ready and they move quick. Speed is really important. And one of the reasons why we know the commitment is important for both sides of the relationship is payment terms. And we've done a very, very good job of laying out clear payment terms with no assumptions. And we have a proven track record of paying on time and accurately. So, so that's, that's extremely important to us to show that th this is a partnership and not, not just we're, we're hiring a vendor and, and live, with, live with the situation. Um, we, we grow together. So, um, just wrapping up this one slide, um, we use these values to determine who stays on the bus, who gets off the bus, and it's our responsibility to put the right people in the right seat. And I feel like we're doing a, a good job doing that. Let's move on to the next, uh, next slide and talk a little bit about benefits of using the, the local suppliers. Um, you can see you know, over, over the course of time, just to let you know, we, we went to vendors, we give them ideas, we work through it, but most of our vendors, and I, I believe this is really true with just a Jamaica business owners in general, is they know they need to step up, they know they need to compete with the globe, they, and they're doing it. And these are the four areas that I'm super excited that the vendors have done a great job on, is speed, accuracy, variety, and pricing. To touch on speed a bit, um, the, it continues to get show improvement. We are removing layers of procurement by working with local vendors. Logistics is so much easier. Managing through the compliance um, is there's less fees. Um, and then the turnaround time, if, if the vendor is needing to do some issue resolution on whatever the situation is, having a local vendor on site makes life extremely easy. So turnaround time is great. Accuracy. Um, we have the benefit of, again, having technical or service support right on hand. Um, you know, when it comes to the longevity of any product, um, we have, it's much easier when it's local than if we had some, uh, someone in the U.S. having to fly down or figure out the process there. Um, variety is a really big one. When it comes to brands and products in the past, you wouldn't have a variety of, of, of different products, and you certainly didn't have the quantity. Over the course of time, and especially now, we have no issues with that. Um, and if there happens to be a, a, a case of having an issue, our, our vendors supply loaner items to us until that issue is resolved. 
pricing, very, very simple, less hidden costs. And since it is local, we, we don't need to hire any experts on, on our payroll to support any of, uh, any of our needs because all the local support in, uh, is, is, is through the vendor process. So a uh, huge benefit there. When you wanna look at um, just the TP side of things, uh, let me just pull this up here a little bit larger so I can see. Um, this is really exciting. So I had mentioned US preferred vendors. It's not just US preferred, it's teleperformance preferred, which means um, global. And we're in 83 countries. We've had our vendors in Jamaica, part of a process to become global preferred vendors. Meaning they're not just selling to us in Montego Bay, they're selling to other countries. They have a, they have their, their market opens to 83 countries, 400,000 employees. And uh, we've seen some, some of our vendors benefit like they never expected to benefit, which we're very proud of as well, that, that they choose Jamaica over any other place in the world. So that's super exciting. And you know, we've, we've stopped going directly to the manufacturer for direct pricing. We, we go to our local suppliers and say, fine, if you need to, if you need to order something from the US, we're not going to skip, skip you and try and skip you out of the process. We're going to have you negotiate for us. And again, that just builds stronger relationships down the road. You can switch over to where we are for future and the outlook. So looking into the future, and this, this is a glide path, guys. This is, this, is, this is a run chart with orange being what we have done for growth and, the, and of course the forecast where we wanna be. BPOs probably, other BPOs probably have a much steeper, sexier looking glide path than us. We've been, we've been obviously growing year over year, which is great. If you look at like 2018 to 2021, we did double. We went from around 2,200 or so to 4,000 total staff. Um, and our next big leap that we need to make is going from around 4,000 to 8,000 um, over the course of the next four or five years. This is something that uh, our, my, my senior leadership executive team has, has challenged Jamaica to do. And we're gonna make this happen. And we're gonna make it happen with the vendors we currently have and with new vendors that we might need to have. So I just wanna talk a little bit about what we need for um, this to this to happen, and uh, obviously transparency. You can see that's a that's a big piece of this. We're going to be transparent with our vendors. We're going to show them how our ramp plan looks and how they can show us evidence to support it. If they're unable to show us that evidence, we'll work together, possibly partnering up with more vendors. Um, but we'll get there together and uh, be successful. ESAT. ESET results, which is a survey that takes place every year. All these uh, actions and decisions, everything that we do with the company impacts the end user, the end user being the agent, the person on the phone. How are we making the pain points of their life um, as small as possible and, and make, make them really want to enjoy coming to work? So every one of our vendors and ourselves have a responsibility to do what's right for our employees. And uh, the survey is a direct feedback of how well we're doing that. And the better we do with our services to our employees, um, it, it just makes it that much easier for us to grow. Uh, if just the most basic thing in the bottom is compliance, just making sure licensing and insurance and taxes and so on are all taken care of. I wanna close though, I just wanna say first, thanks again for letting me speak. Um, hopefully I answered some of the questions that you might have. I hope that I sparked or generated some excitement with where Jamaica is heading. And like what Conrad had said earlier about innovation, that is really where we have to head next. And I like that Conrad's thinking in the same line that I am about work from home. We need so more solutions there, which Conrad touched on. We also need to look at um, just how do, how do we recognize the BPO more and how do we get the vendors to help us recognize the BPO industry more through their advertising, through their art, news articles, through social media? How can they help show that we are doing more than just servicing calls from the US or somewhere else in the world? 
And the last thing I'd like to leave you with too is recycling, less waste. How can vendors help us be just more efficient when it comes to the environment? So leaving you with that, thank you, Conrad. Hopefully uh, I added some value to today's call. Um, I'll hand it back over to you. Wow, thank you very much, Jake. I mean, I think you did an excellent job in, in laying it out for us. Um, I really like the fact that you talk about those values, which are so very important to your company, but I think it is also important to all BPO companies. Integrity, mm -hmm. respect, professionalism, innovation, commitment. All of this is what we need our vendors to have when they're engaging with uh, this BPO opportunity within this space. It goes a very long way. It speaks for itself in terms of recommending you to other BPO operators. So, 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 so uh, service providers who are on this call, I want you to bear that in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, time is up against us. I know Gloria has a hard stop in about five minutes or so. Um, you know, so I'm going to, you know, refer to some questions now and have Gloria answer a couple of those questions. If I can just get to the Q&A real quick. Um, there, there are some interesting questions in there for you, Gloria. Uh, hang on a second, let me see what's going on here. Uh, Janelle, probably you can help me. I'm not seeing the Q&As. Our first question is coming from Conrad, your namesake. <laughs> can you comment on medicine as a potential market for Jamaican-based outsourcers? So Gloria, I, want to take that. I think they may be yes. referring to something yes. like telemedicine. Absolutely. Telemedicine has an opportunity in Jamaica. Um, in fact, there are a few companies now providing the services in telemedicine. And there is actually a cannabis outsourcing company right now who is growing cannabis or growing um, marijuana <laughs> for an entity outside of Jamaica. So there are opportunities in telemedicine, there's opportunity in um, medical billing, and there is opportunity in the productive side of growing cannabis. Those are areas that I think Jamaicans should look to tap into. Um, there's a nutraceutical industry as well. Um, we have some of the, from what I gather, the most potent ginger and turmeric in Jamaica. And there are opportunities for us, not just in the services sector, but absolutely in, in, in the distribution and sales sector as well. Some of our Jamaicans in our outsourced companies are some of the best sales agents in the world. So if it is that you want to sell your products outside of Jamaica, there are opportunities there as well. Thanks. Uh, another question, uh, Jean. Next question from Raquel Clark. Uh, he's in, and he works in an accounting and auditing firm in Kingston. He's saying that his his firm offers outsourcing services, mostly outside of Jamaica. Are there business opportunities locally, though, for someone like like Raquel, who's asking this question? I'm going to answer that one very quickly, and then I'm going to go. Yes, there is, because many of our um, multinationals buy services from local service providers. Um, finance and accounting, audited accounting, um, various services, payroll services. Um, so yes, there is opportunity. And what they can do is make contact with our secretariat at 876-619-1713 to be added, to find out how they can become part of the network of service providers that we share with investors when they come to Jamaica. All right, I'm sorry I have to go because I have another meeting that's starting now. I quite so. understand, Gloria, um, because you, I need to be a part of that meeting as well. So, yes. um, but we will just stick around for about five minutes more uh, to answer some more questions. Well, we thank you, Gloria, for joining us this morning and um, for your presentation. And of course, those questions that are directly thank related you. to you, we will definitely forward them to you to have you answer those, those okay. questions. Um, Janelle, there was a question there that I found interesting earlier when I was looking through them about the opportunity for cosmetologists. Am I correct? Is it, was there such a question? You are correct. You are correct. Uh, this person was basically asking if there are opportunities within the sector concerning cosmetology. Oh, cosmetology, right. 
And, and of course, I can understand why somebody would ask that question. And there is what I would say to service provider, and this is where innovation and creativity now comes in. You may end up having to become a mobile cosmetologist. Um, once you have a proper proposal that you can present to one of these BPO companies, you may be able to have an opportunity to come on site and do somebody's here within their lunch hour or something to that effect. That is what we're talking about when we say you need to pivot, you need to make that mind shift, you need to create, uh, be innovative and creative in terms of your presentations and proposal to these BPO companies. You have services. How can I get these services within this space? You're going to have to now think outside of your regular brick and mortar and begin now to look at how you can bring services to people rather than people coming to you for services. So I will just say that about that um, as far as cosmetology is concerned. We'll take a couple more questions, Janelle, before I wrap up. Two questions from Conrad again. Conrad is asking, given the time difference, can we comment on the potential importance of the UK as a market for Jamaican BP and ITO? Well, I know Jay can answer that, but I will just quickly say, the beauty about the BPO space is that it is a 24 seven operation. So the time zones and so on um, rarely affects BPO operations. In fact, BPO companies, um, you know, do rotate their staff, make timetables and so on to accommodate people outside of um, our local time zone here. Am I correct, Jake? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. So the time zones are not an issue not an as issue. far as, you know, taking advantage of opportunities um, in places like UK and so on. Right. Another question. There has been lots of talk about moving up the value chain as lower cost commodity work is eroded by technology. How is the sector responding to this and how are we offering higher value opportunities within the sector? I'm glad that, that again question came up. Sorry, Gloria had to leave. But again, this is part of the reason why you would have heard the narrative around what we what we normally call BPO shifting to what we're now calling global services sector because we wanted to to make sure that uh, moving up the value chain will capture um, those kinds of career opportunities within legal services, knowledge process outsourcing, those kinds of higher value, um, you know, services. And, and what we have been doing as a country is that we have been positioning ourselves through the global services sector to train our people to be able to participate in the higher value market of the global services sector. A very grassroots question, very practical. Mm -hmm. I am new to the trucking business and I have a five ton truck. How do I go about finding the right companies for business? That's a very interesting question. And I think that that goes outside of the realm of BPO. But again, one of the things that I heard Jake mentioning, and this is something, again, we need to change our mindset, make the mindset, um, mindset shift. How are we advertising our services? Are we in the social media space advertising what it is that we are that we have available as a service? So he may be a trucker, um, but what he needs to do is to put himself in a place and space where people who would need trucking service will be able to see him. And, and, and so you know, people need now to begin to recognize that the social media pages are places where people are. You just need to find that social media platform that would attract the people that would need your services and advertise your services there. Janelle, I'm sorry, but we have to wrap up at this point. I don't know if Jake wanted to say something before I, I do a wrap up. Just super fast, that question about the, that, the, the question you just had though, about what's the next steps for this country. We have tech support, retention, sales. We're still working with collections, chat work, um, content moderation, these are all the next level or next layers of where we're going to go with experience. But very, very important to understand every industry needs to have entry level positions so people can grow into a career path. You wouldn't believe, and this is a, a big number and I'm going to expose myself a little bit here, 
but close to 30% of who walks in our lobby to try and get a job is their very first interview ever. And then it's, then it's going to be their very first job ever. And to, to assume they're going to go right into the most difficult call type is, is not something that we can just expect. We can train all we want, but it takes experience and we have to have entry level. It's a good thing. People are very, very thankful that we give them that opportunity. And we watch people grow over the course of six months, a year, two years. It's not decades, you can grow and accelerate very, very fast in this industry. So I, I just wanted to make that point quick, Conrad, before. Thank you, on. Jake. And, um, you know, having said that, Jake, I, I really appreciate the fact that you showed us the growth trajectory for, um, for teleperformance. 8,000 employees by 2025. What mm -hmm. that says, ladies and gentlemen, is that the industry is growing. And as it grows, there are going to be need for more and more services. And so you now need to position yourself to take advantage of the service opportunities that the growth in the sector is expected to provide. And so I'm gonna wrap up by saying, for those of you who filled out the surveys, right? We have received them. Actually, we've received over 80 uh, survey documents from service providers. What we're gonna do at the back end of this forum, we're gonna go through those, we're gonna send you emails, to find out your location and a little bit more about the services that you provide so we can properly match you with BPO operators, right? So look out for an email from me. You will get that email over the course of this into next week, right? Um, just to touch base with you so you know that you have not filled those surveys out in vain. The other thing that I will encourage you to do is to get in touch with the Global Services Association of Jamaica. Get in touch with their secretariat. Find out how you can become a member of that association because that will give you an in into the BPO sector, right? To meet with the operators within that space. And finally, um, but of course not least, you know, it's for us to understand that we can make the shift. Uh, you know, we can make that shift that will position us to take advantage of the opportunity that the BPO sector is providing. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I really wanna thank my panelists this morning, Jake Becker, who is still up with us, who I know have to leave in a little while as well, uh, Gloria Henry for her presentation, and of course, the support staff from JamPro, the, the INCO team. Thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, we will be touching base with you via email, so look out for that. And of course, it's a recorded session, so you can always go back and watch the presentations for the contact information if you had not written them down before. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good rest of the day. All right, thank you.